Hey guys, in this tutorial I'm going to give you my top tips on how you can draw white fur in graphite. I'm Kirsty Rebecca and I make drawing and painting tutorials that are easy to follow even if you're just starting out. So for this piece I'm working on Archer's hot pressed watercolour paper which is quite a smooth paper but you can use whatever paper you prefer to use with graphite. My first tip is to start with a good reference photo. When you're working with white fur, you'll need to choose a photo that has a lot of contrast. So there is a definite distinction between the light areas and the dark areas. If you turn your reference photo to black and white, you should easily be able to see all of the fur detail, where the shadows are and where the highlighted areas are. For example, you don't want to start with a reference photo of a dog where the photo was taken from across the room. So it's blurry and pixelated and it's in dull lighting because when you turn that photo into black and white and you zoom in, it will probably look like the fur is all one big blob of white without any details at all. It's really very hard to make up shadows and highlights and fur detail if it's not there in the original reference photo. So starting with a good photo where you can see the individual strands of fur and has a good amount of shadows and highlights is the most important step. If you're doing a drawing for a commission, it can be a lot harder because sometimes the pet has passed away and you don't have many photos to choose from. If the reference photo isn't ideal, I would politely ask the client for a better photo and explain how to take one, or just politely turn down the commission if the pet's passed away or they can't take any more photos. You can just explain to them that you don't believe that you can create a high quality portrait from that photo. It's not worth accepting the commission only to have your client be let down because it isn't the same quality as your previous work. When I draw white subjects on white paper, I like to add in a background so that the paper isn't white. This way you can overlap some of the white fur details onto the background and it will show up rather than having to outline where the edge of the fur meets the white page. You don't have to do a background that is as dark as this, but you could create just a light shadow sort of area around the edge of the subject that is slightly darker than the white of the paper. A lot of people try and create white fur by using graphite pencils, working from the light areas to the dark areas, and that can be a very difficult way of trying to create the fur texture. You're basically trying to add in shadows around the lightest bits of fur, which is the white bit of the paper, which can be very confusing and time consuming. So the way that I like to do it is by blocking in the darker shadows first so I don't lose my outline and then fill in the entire animal with a mid-tone shade. You can use a graphite pencil and lightly shade over the entire subject, making sure that you're following the fur direction with your pencil strokes, or you can do what I did and use a graphite powder to speed up this process. I just applied the powder with a soft brush over the entire wolf. And before I show you the next tip, if you want to follow along with my longer real-time tutorials where I talk you through every step of the process, then Patreon might be the solution for you. For a small amount per month, you'll have access to every tutorial that I've previously uploaded on your chosen tier level in a variety of mediums like pastel, colored pencil, graphite, watercolor, and more. You will also have access to the original reference photo, a traceable outline, and a list of supplies that I'm using so you really can follow along every step of the way. My tutorials don't skip any stages or cut out any important parts of the process, and I will share all of my secrets to help you improve. Every month I will upload brand new tutorials to the library so you can grow and develop your drawing and painting skills and take your art to the next level. You can also join in on our members chat group where you can ask questions or advice or share your artwork and talk to other members in the Patreon community. The link is in the description if you want to check it out. So this is where it starts to get easier. Once you've gone in with your layer of graphite powder or graphite pencil, you can then go in with a small eraser. And I'm using the Tombow Mono Eraser, which is a bit like a mechanical pencil, but with an eraser instead of lead. And I'm basically drawing in the white parts of the fur with the eraser. This way you can work from dark to light, which is a more natural way of drawing fur. And you can bring out all of those lighter areas quite easily. You can then go back afterwards and define the clumps of fur with your graphite pencils or mechanical pencils around the highlighted area that you've just created. I find that this technique is a much faster way than trying to work around the highlight areas from the beginning. And because you have a darker background, you can add some fur detail over the edge of your subject into the background using this technique as well. When you work with graphite in comparison to charcoal, you may have noticed that the darkest graphite pencil isn't as dark as a charcoal pencil, 
So another great tip is to use a Staedtler Mars Lumograph Black 8B pencil. And this specific pencil is the darkest graphite pencil that I've found. And it doesn't leave anywhere near as much shine as a normal 8B graphite pencil does. This pencil gets really quite dark, so it's really great for your darkest shadows. I'd highly recommend picking up that pencil. The most important part of working in realism is your values, especially when you're working in a black and white medium like graphite. So making your shadows dark enough and your highlights light enough is going to be the most important thing to making something look realistic. So a good way to check if your values are right is to compare a photo of your artwork to your reference photo side by side. And that way you'll be able to see if your darks are dark enough and your lights are light enough in comparison to your reference photo. And that Mars Lumograph Black 8B pencil will really help you get those darker areas in and it will really make your drawing pop. Another great tip for working in graphite is to change your reference photo to black and white. It will be much easier to work from a black and white photo than to work from a colored photo because you don't have to try and convert the colored values to black and white in your head. So just make it easier on yourself and just convert that reference photo to black and white. To make your fur look realistic throughout the entire process, you wanna try and think of it as clumps and clusters rather than individual strands of fur. If you try and draw in every strand of fur, it can look wiry and not really realistic. You also don't need to have too many tiny details in your piece to make it look realistic. A lot of people think that adding in all those tiny little details is what's going to make it look realistic, but that's not the case. It's, it's really your values that are going to make it look realistic. If you stand back from your work and look at it from a normal viewing distance, and you can't really see the detail that you're adding, then it probably doesn't need to be there. It's totally up to you how much detail you add. But I quite like artwork that looks realistic from a distance and then when you get close you can see the pencil strokes or the brush strokes. When working on fur, make sure that your pencil strokes and the eraser strokes are going in the right direction and also the right length as well. So pay attention to the reference photo and make sure that you copy where the fur changes direction. Your pencil strokes or eraser strokes will most likely show through at the end. So you want to have any strokes that are visible adding to that texture of the fur and have them going in the right direction and be the right length as well. If you want to follow along with a two hour real time version of this tutorial then I'll leave a link to my Patreon channel in the description below. But there's a playlist on the screen with some other graphite tutorials that I thought you might enjoy so click on that and I'll see you over there.